So they're getting you into line. What what sort of a posse do you want? Do you want to be on the? Do you want to be on that rail? Do you want to be in the middle? Do you want to be where do you want to be? Is it just or do you, does it is it how it comes? Um, I always try to to sort of be sort of you know in her you know the inside line to five or six horses wide is sort of just the route that I've always seemed to seem to take. So again, it just depends on your horse. Some horses like you know don't like being crowded, and some horses don't mind it. So um, and also you got to take into factor then of of horses that you know who you want to be following as well. So if you're going to be trying to sit mid division drop in, you obviously you want to be following horses that. Um, you're fairly confident that will will jump around in front of you and that they're not going to get a fall and stuff like that. So there's an awful lot of preparation that's got to go into it. It's uh, you know it's not just a case of just lining up and hoping for the best, you know. And I know you're always told you know be sensible, don't go too fast at the start and, and what have you. Do you think that they can tell that this is different to a normal race? Do, do you get that sense when you sat on the horse? Do you think they think this is a little bit different to what normally happens? Oh, definitely so. I mean, you just got to look at the the crowds here. You know that that are going to be you know the, these hospitality boxes. Here beside us and, and the stands and you walk under a shoot and stuff like that it's a massive occasion with it with with a lot of people roaring and shouting it's 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 a really is a a unique um, occasion and uh, I mean the horses know there's something different when they when they come here and and they seen with all the horses going around and you know all the hospitality boxes everyone screaming and shouting and you know it's um oh yeah they, they, they know there's it's you know it's it's a big day so Darrell we've negotiated the first We've negotiated the third, which is a big open ditch, and now we're here at Beaches Brook. And on the face of it, it doesn't look any different to the rest of them. But obviously in your mind, you know that it's a different fence. How do you approach this fence differently to the previous ones that you've jumped? Um, well, you're hoping that you're in a nice sort of a rhythm by the time you come down to this fence. And I mean, look, this fence is obviously, it's, you know, from, from this angle here, it looks you know, the same as every other fence, but obviously when, you'll see now in a minute, when we get around to the far side, there's quite a big drop. So it's, again, it's trying not to meet it too long, trying not to meet it too short. It's trying to meet this fence on, on, on a perfect stride really is, 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 is the key, really. I'm not a horseman and I wouldn't fancy jumping from that side to this side. You'll see quite a horses, when they jump it, they jump and they knuckle down and, and that's when they sort of knuckle over yeah. the far side of it because it's the drop that catches them out of the far side of it. So is that them sort of over jumping it do you think? Is that them being a little bit brave because they think they know what's coming because they've jumped the previous five fences and they know what's coming? No it's just really because you're obviously taken off from this sort of height and yeah. then you're landing at this side so you, you know your jump is yeah. over exaggerate if that makes sense so you're you're naturally you're going a lot more you're going forward down yeah. a lot more and that's when horses sort of yeah. don't take out the landing feet and they stumble on landing. So are you basically telling your horse when you come into this wub steady a little bit don't get carried away just, just I do be... that at every fence but, <laughs> <laughs> but more so this side yeah. because you need the horse really you need the horse to, to measure on a nice ride really to give you the best the best opportunity you over jump it you land here, and as you see, it, it, the ground rises up here. Yeah. So that won't give the horses time to to pick up his feet against once he land. And yeah. then, like you say, if you get in too tight, you're into the belly of it. Yeah. And then you're brushing, you're brushing your front legs over the jump. So that means you're losing momentum. Yeah. And that means that you're landing again. You're landing quite steep because you're in too close to it. So ideally, you need to be meeting this on a perfect stride. However, our lad, we've just popped it. We're in a nice position and we're going to move on to the canal turn. Interesting. Let's do it. Is. Come on then. <laughs> right, Daryl, so we've jumped Beaches Brook, Foynaven, the smallest fence on the course, and then we've come to arguably one of the most unique fences around the country, the canal turn. So we'll walk and talk. So you were telling me, you think most jockeys at this point, they'll have swung wide off fine haven to find to get an angle to come back in yeah yeah so what we do is you you jump to fine haven um and obviously a lot of the a lot of the jockeys will will come down um out to the right here to the outside because what ideally what you want to be doing is you want to be coming in on this sort of an angle yeah um to jump the the, the fence because obviously then you're 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 sort of on the turn as you're jumping if that makes sense whereas if you come on a straight line, you're going to jump straight, but you're going to jump out the way, yeah. and then it's it's a massive turnaround. So what really what you need to do is you need to be trying to cut this as tight as you can, yeah. so you're not going to lose ground. So the ideal scenarios or position would be coming out wide here, yeah. 
and then coming in at this at this fence. Yeah, but we're, at, but we're, we're, we're coming in at this angle this here. This angle aren't we? here, yeah. 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 Coming in at this angle here. Okay. And um, literally, again, it's 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 a big jump because you, what you're doing is you are taking this jump at a at an angle. Yeah. So it's it's a big old spread. By the time you get take off from here, yeah. over the fence to on the far side. So if you can imagine, you're jumping here. It gives you a, a shorter cutting distance to the next fence. Yeah. Whereas if you met it wrong and you end up jumping straight, what you're doing is you're going out and then you've got to come right back around. So this is a very very tricky fence, and you've got this is one fence that you got to try and get right. So here we are, Daryl. We're at the iconic chair and. As much as all the other fences have got their different intricacies and nuances, there is no doubt in what this fence is. It's massive. What's it like to jump over? It's a great buzz when you jump it well, but um, as, as, as you can see in, in the years gone by, I haven't jumped it so well. And it's not as much fun, but uh, you know, it's, it's a massive, you know, when you come in and meet this fence on, the, on a perfect stride, and, and sometimes you, you, you're lucky enough, you get that feeling five or six strides out where the horse you know locks on and he takes you into the fence and um, it's a really it is, I promise you it's a magic feeling just flying over this chair you know so let's have a look where are we trying to <laughs> hey <laughs> nice and agile this fence really you, you've got to be meeting it on a good positive stride from here wow jeez so this is where you go this is where you go and this is where you jump you, this is where go I, from ideally here. I'd like to try and propel my horse to to take off you, you get in too close to this fence yeah your hind legs aren't going to get up quick enough it's going to be very very difficult yeah. or if you can imagine if you take off from here it's too far isn't it it's got to be it's a long way isn't it it is a hell it's of a long, long way. way in full flight which was the horse i remember you telling me that 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 could you, didn't it didn't it wasn't a national horse but it was so was it one of the volners that was so scopy it could jump from you could jump from miles back. Which horse was it now? We had, we had free gift I used to ride, and he used to, I promise you, he was the scopiest horse I've ever ride. I mean, he could take off from here and, and get to the far side really? of it. He was, he was an unbelievable scope, yeah. yeah. Um, I've ridden plenty of big scopy horses yeah. in the past, but I definitely wouldn't like to be taken off from here. No. So ideally, Valto, we're coming in, we're getting to a roundabout, we're getting to a roundabout here. Here, and perfect. And it's like, boom, come on then boy, let's get over. Can, then you can lie up the neck and think in your Leicester Piggott, really, yeah. yeah. Chill. This is a picture moment. Yeah. <laughs> Jump the water. This is like the goalkeeper who's just smiling. Yeah. Jump the water and then you're off again. So here at the finishing line, look, you've won the Grand National before for uh, when you rode for Paul Nichols, John Hales owned Neptune Collange. But I know that the relationship you've got with Simon, Isaac and Anthony is a really special one. And, you know, what would that mean to you to ride the Grand National winner for those three people? Oh, it's by far, I mean, the biggest achievement I'll probably ever do in my entire life. I mean, just to just to do that for you know for for Simon, Isaac, and Anthony would be just you know dreams of all dreams. I you know I couldn't I don't think words could actually describe what that moment or what that feeling would be because you know Simon and Isaac and Anthony they've just been incredible people for my life and not only as as my bosses for a race and, and stuff like that but incredible mentors and, and, and like brothers to me you know that have you know we talked about different things in life and, and everything and they, you know I, know I know Simon and Isaac and Anthony it's one thing they you know it's the reason why you know they got the horse that they've got is because hopefully one day they dream of winning the Grand National and, and for me if I could supply that for them it would be just be amazing yeah it really would it'd be an absolute amazing